All right, we have a lot of requests tonight. First of all, we're going to do for you an Italian song. When do you get your menopause, sir? You don't know. I don't know if you know. An Italian kind of sing-along song. Everybody's got to sing a little bit if you know the song. If not, but let me ask first. How many Italians do we have in the house? Two or three or four or five. Oh, yeah. They're all gambling. <laughs> well, to make you feel at home, I would like to say something. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> hey, where's well, the red shot? Dude, you're trying to slow. <laughs> Sometimes the world is a valley of hard days and tears. And in a hustle and bustle, no sunshine appears. But you and I in our love always there to remind us There is a way we can leave our shadow behind us <laughs> what the heck happened now? You're televised. <laughs> they don't know the lyrics. What happened? You're Whoa. getting nervous. Yeah. They just hum it. Yeah. You know why the hummingbird hum? They don't know the lyrics. <laughs> Here we go. My mother and I, we drive from California out here. It takes us about six hours, and we come out here to see the sunspots about four times a year. Every time we come to Las Vegas, we come here, first thing. The plaza has become their home. The management let them perform the way they want to perform. But God, what will I do with this boo? And God created man. By hiring us now solidly until I guess we die or something, they know our fans are here. It's now Come hold me tight. They make me feel like years ago when I came to Vegas and we had wonderful lounge shows, which they don't have anymore. Just like the ocean, And they make you feel like you're part of them. They, they like you, you become their family. Of course, we've all become friends over the years. <laughs> it kind of cracks the audience up. But the winds have changed the railways, blowing. Holy chimichanga! There's probably a lot of people at the hotel that feel like, haven't they been here long enough? But the business is good, so it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We have one lady in here now, Marie. She gets on a bus in San Diego every Tuesday morning to come down here to see the sunspots for two days. She's 80-something years old. She can barely walk. But this is how much these guys mean to us. Because they, they are givers. 
They touch your heart. There's Marie. We started in the Philippines, what they call it the humble craze. Everybody's forming little groups and everybody's competing to like contest. Form a group, sing, and then go to the contest. If you win something, go to another contest. You know what the price is, the first price? It's like uh, two bottles of ketchup, yeah, and condensed milk, and uh, some biscuits. That's the first price, you know. And then the second price, you get less, but the same. You know, instead of two, you get one, you know. We were playing uh, first the regular nightclubs. Then we went inside the Subic Bay, playing the military clubs there. Subic Bay, naval base in the Philippines. And we get to know people there, like the manager of the EM club, you know, enlisted men club, said that you guys will do great in the, the Far East, like Okinawa, Japan, Korea. So an agent from Okinawa saw us. So he said, like, hey, you guys want to go to Okinawa? Yeah, but we don't have any passport. I'll pay for it, the guy said. And then you pay me. How much are you going to pay? We'll pay you $50 a week. Wow, $50 a week? That's, that's 100 pesos, man. That's a lot. We'll take it. And you know what? Never did came back. Went to Okinawa and said two weeks, and we stayed in Okinawa for like a year and a half. I mean, we got that place sold up. They were in demand. We're the workingest act in, in Okinawa. There's like 50 military bases, and we play them all one by one. I think that's how we made it, because the uh, American crowd in the military helped us. girls are all, all over there, you know. In Japan, they they like you. They, they have this rolled papers, and from the audience, they will throw it to you, you know, and you grab it. Then you find out who is it, you know. So the, the end of it is the girl that likes you, you know. It's, 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 oh! <laughs> I met the Sunspots in 1965. I had been a singer in Hawaii and here in California when I went to Guam. So I formed a group and I kept hearing that a group by the name of the Sunspots were coming to the island and it was a big deal. We passed through Guam and that's where we saw Sandra playing with another group. They always tell us, Draki, you need a girl, you need a girl. We ask her if she wants to join us. I was 17. Asked me if I wanted to go to Las Vegas and sing with them in Las Vegas. And I remember saying to them, thank you, it was very nice, but no thank you. I didn't want to go to Las Vegas. But her mother said, you are going to Las Vegas. <laughs> so it was her mother that did her. Yeah. When I left to join them, I would say most of the island was at the airport. It was the most amazing thing. They had a the TV people there, that was in the paper. So it was a very big deal that the Sunspots had hired me. When we came here, we thought we we're going to make it because uh, we have a contract, one of the, the best agencies in, in the entertainment. So we thought maybe we're going to make it in the 60s. 
until the Beatles came. Well, she was just A lot of bands and a lot of uh, singers didn't make it. It's because the British invasion took over the United States. A lot of acts that were ready to go big, they were just canceled. We have chances to go big. We were in New York. We were playing the Latin Quarter in New York, the showroom. Played there like two, three times. In New York, everything is there, you know, Ed Sullivan, Hollywood Palace. We're on the way to Ed Sullivan, almost Ed Sullivan, but uh, when we got to New York, there's a, there's a strike. We, can't, we didn't make it at all, I mean, because, uh, you know. The old hometown looks the same as a step down from the train. Have to meet me. Johnny Carson, Ed Sullivan. I mean, we talked about all these things that were, were being set up for us to do. And they, they totally believed in the group and they thought the group was actually gonna go somewhere. And instead of taking those things, our management team decided that we were going to be the opening act for Al Hurt instead. Just some wrong decisions, I think, were made. We just need that one, one little kick to get that exposure, and we didn't get it. Yes, and oh, come to meet me. I'm just reaching, smiling sweetly. It's good to touch the green, green grass. Oh. basically back on the road, you know, got to be everyday life. They sent you everywhere. And I used to say, you know, our manager probably didn't have a map in his house because he would book us from Las Vegas to New York, New York to Lake Tahoe. I mean, in that order. From then on, we were like zigzagging all over the United States, even Canada, Puerto Rico, Mexico, with Bahamas, name it, we've been there. And we came from the Philippines, our English is bad. Instead of saying the F or saying the P, we put F in it, you know, like people. <laughs> Language. Yiddish. That is Chinese. And that is Yiddish. It's a coffee filter. <laughs> we did things on the road that people really didn't believe entertainers did. Me, I can go anywhere. I go fishing. I go truck a river. Man, I got a lot of things to do. But Sandra, you know, she gets lonely. Yeah. So Roger wind up babysitting Sandra. He would always make sure if I wanted to go somewhere, I needed to do something on our day out. He'd always make sure I got to the club, and he seemed to have a little bit more sympathy for me, I guess. I got married. We travel a little over. When my first boy was born, we were in Florida. You know, I remember that day when she called me and, you know, it's a boy and everything. And I was in the phone and I said, it's a boy. And everybody in the club said, it's a boy, Roger. And uh, so it was kind of hard. I was, I was, I wasn't home for my first born. Let's say that. You are my special angel. Send from the Lord smiles down on me, sent an angel to love. We uh, 
my first daughter. We lost my first daughter when she was seven months old. Um, Roger was, and the guys, I wasn't with the group then. I had taken time off, and uh, they were in Texas. Went home to California and, you know, buried the child, and then I have to go to, to Chicago. And I remember that the first, first night performing, you know, like everything is still in your head, you know. And it was like, you know, I can't, I can't uh, sing or anything. I was just there just playing. And that was pretty hard. My son was about three then. We all went back on the road, myself included. Went back with the group for, for a little bit. Needed the support. They were great support for me. You know, they, they helped us. They helped Roger and I through that quite a bit. That was a really hard time. <clears throat> always gravy or always uh, accepted you know we weren't accepted in a lot of places but I would say majority we were accepted to me when they watch us and we're doing a good show they also forget that we're Asian we worked in the deep south and I remember going there the first time and seeing white only colored only and here we are, seven little Asian people that don't know which bathroom to use. Oh, my eggs are living in Texas. Yeah. Texas is a place I really love to be. Oh, my eggs are living in Texas. Yeah. You adopt the American system. You don't alienate yourself from them. You don't come here to the United States as Filipino and live like you're living in the Philippines. We do have frustration, you know, because sometimes we're thinking like, gosh, you know, if I was an American, a white boy, and what we're doing here, I probably, we'd probably be somewhere. It, it's like a Star Trek. Captain Kirk, right? But he's surrounded by, with this expert in computer, uh, right? Who is uh, an Asian guy, and the other guy is a Europe, Eastern European, the doctor is an Eastern European guy, right? That's exactly, I, I see America, it's a Star Trek. It's Star Trek. The guy, the head, it would be an Anglo. <laughs> there ain't no doubt I love this It's like you walk into a club and you're trying to be incognito and you're trying to be cool and these guys just blow it for you. They just put that spotlight on you and they start picking on you and they... But, you know, people like to be recognized. Yes. You take it. Oh, no, don't take your clothes off. No, 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 please. Would you get your hat, sir? Kmart? Oh, I got mine at Walmart. The country guy's back. <laughs> Sir, one dollar is not enough. <laughs> He's giving us 50, 20 cents a piece. Everything is beautiful in its own way. I love to go and watch the audience. You know, they're showing itself. You know that, right? You can just tell watching their faces how much they love these guys. Everybody's beautiful. This is like uh, my medicine. I go up on the stage and I perform, the pain goes away. Especially when you got a good audience and they applaud and everything. We entertain them and sometimes, you know, 
they are sick, but you know, they, they want to be happy. They, they want to they wanna join the party. And then, you know, the next day or a week and say, like, you know what happened to him? That's the way. But we still keep on entertaining. I, I love it when people give me a smile and they give me a good response when I sing. That means I'm still accepted. As long as I'm singing, I can hit a note high, whatever, I, I'll, I'll be in the group, I'll be singing. My dream was going to Las Vegas. I was, you know, when I was in the Philippines, I hear about Las Vegas. I say, wow. I see it in the pictures in the movie, you know. Wow, isn't that something? They are very successful. For a group to stay together this long, still be entertaining as they are, still have the talent, and still can bring smiles to people's faces, to me, that is about as successful as you can get. For what is a man? What has he got? He will love himself. They did it sideways. <laughs> Thank you very much. May God bless. Thank you. And did it my way. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Thank you. What's your name uh, down there in the floor? <laughs> yes. Joan. Oh, 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 oh that's Jane. <laughs> Jane. Joan. Joan, that's our one girl. more, one Joan more. Jane. That's Julie. Yes, yes ma'am. Julie. Sarah, Shirley, yes, Susanna, boy, Sherry, and Anne Marie. Wow. Good luck. Got all the names tonight, huh? Here we go. A little bit of Shirley. My life. Yeah. Oh, on. A little bit Elvira. Patricia A little bit of Sitting for single, I let the bed rudely. A little bit of Sheila, a little bit Francine, a little bit of Ella. A little bit Marie Marie in my life. A little bit of Sarah. A little bit Joan on the floor. A 